The concern over the Delta variant and children hanging over the start to school, a big issue for so many families as we all head back to the classroom this year. To talk about that and more, Dr. Ruth Bergren joins us now in today's Q&A, infectious disease specialist with the Long School of Medicine at UT Health San Antonio. Doctor, let's start there with kids. We know the Delta variant is impacting more children than we have seen with previous surges, but do we know if it's making them more severely ill than in previous times in this pandemic? Yeah, so that's a tough question to answer with really good data. What I can tell you is that nationally, the reports are that increasing proportions of the pediatric inpatient population is there with COVID. Um, one children's hospital in New Orleans reported as much as 20% of their pediatric inpatient population is there with COVID. And locally, I've canvassed our pediatricians. We don't have good aggregate population-based data yet locally, but I've talked to our pediatricians around here, and the estimates range as high as 16% in some cases of the inpatient pediatric population being COVID positive. And when I ask pediatricians about what case, kinds of cases they're seeing, um, it's very alarming. And they're seeing normally healthy teenagers who are coming in with enormous pulmonary embolism, which is a big old blood clot in the lungs. They're seeing uh, babies as young as seven month old who have had suffered a cardiac arrest in the context of having a COVID illness. So it's very disturbing and we should pay attention. Do, am I correct in saying the big concern right now? Obviously, it's the unvaccinated get vaccinated, but also kids and pregnant mothers. Yes. Um, so for my colleagues who've been on the inpatient COVID service this past week, the hardest thing for them has been seeing some really sick pregnant moms come in. And we've had moms come in and require ECMO, which is basically being put on heart-lung bypass because the lungs just can't oxygenate. That's really a dangerous situation. And in some cases, mothers have lost their unborn babies. And this is so preventable. It is also worth noting that the um, CDC is now saying pregnant women should get vaccinated. Um, previously, the recommendation was a little bit less strongly worded. It was consideration. And now there's a strong directive that pregnant women, because they're coming in so sick, because they're at risk for harm to their unborn fetuses, they should be vaccinated for their own protection and the protection of the it's such a heartbreaking trend we're seeing with this Delta variant. And when it comes to hospitalizations, you know, I've still heard people make the argument or assumption that a lot of people who are getting severely ill must have pre-existing conditions. They were perhaps already in bad health prior to being infected. What's your response to that? What are you seeing? Well, Yes, it's true that um, the more pre-existing conditions you have, the more likely you are to do poorly with COVID. That having been said, given that the Delta variant is so infectious, infecting probably more than twice as many people per case compared to the wild type that originally came, so with so many more infections, it is driving more people into the hospital. And yes, we're seeing folks who don't have underlying conditions coming in and being very, very sick. And we've seen deaths in those people as well. So uh, you shouldn't uh, write it off. And also for people who feel like they're healthy so they shouldn't worry because they'll get over COVID, there's a disturbing study that just got published in a very credible journal, the journal Nature, a scientific report, where they did a huge meta-analysis of tens of thousands of cases of COVID-19 from around the world. And they determined that about 80% of people who do recover from COVID have some kind of long-term symptom that lasts beyond two weeks. And they, cata they cataloged 55 different things that can be going wrong with you after you get over COVID. And the top five are headache, shortness of breath, hair loss, um, attention deficit and shortness of breath. And a lot of people, surprising number of people, more than 20% have persistent loss of their sense of smell. So for people who think it's not a big deal because I'm healthy and I'm not likely to die, 
It's true you're not likely to die, but if you get over it, you are very likely to have some kind of pretty troublesome symptom that will interfere with your lifestyle for a long time. So get vaccinated because that's the best way to prevent this horrible disease. Dr. Bergen, before we let you go, there's so, you know, this is the last time we're going to talk before school starts for a, a, a number of people. There are a lot of parents who are anxious, stressed out there. I think I'm standing next to one. What is your advice to parents when it comes to kids that are younger than 12, they can't get vaccinated right now, your advice for them as they head back to school? Right. Talk to the kids about masking and tell them that this is just like putting your seat belt on when you get in the car. It doesn't guarantee you that everything is going to come out fine, but it really increases your safety. And none of us has any problem with putting on a safety belt for a, a kid. And so nobody should have any problem with putting on a mask. And you can empower these children, empower your kids and say to your child, this is for your own health and well-being as well as others. And nobody can take away your right to wear this mask. So you should wear your mask. Dr. Ruth Bergren, as always, thanks for being here.